So I was interested to know what your thoughts are about Marla, the man. Marla, most obviously, was a very complete human being, uh, had this genius for somehow spanning the complete gamut of human emotions uh, in sound. Most people's perception of him is some kind of tragic figure always moping about in his garden and writing uh, lacrimose music is um, off, off center. He was not misanthropic at all, very focused, very professional, a tough administrator, a uh, beady-eyed conductor, no doubt, but he was interacting with people all the time. He wasn't closed up in that little summer pavilion that he uh, retreated to to compose all year long. He was uh, modest and um, certainly was aware of his failings, whatever they were, and made every effort to improve as he grew older, which Apparently, according to testimony of his friends, he, he, he did most successfully. Which composers do you think had the most influence upon Mahler? I would think uh, Bach and uh, Beethoven. There's much in Mahler's music that is reminiscent not of Beethoven's music itself, but of the spirit that imbues uh, Beethoven's most dramatic efforts, and also his uh, Beethoven's lyricism. I think he was uh, most influenced by, by that composer, perhaps not even being aware of it. Now, I believe you were in your late teens when you first encountered the music of Mahler and then conducted it a little later. How did you get to grips with his music initially? How did you learn to conduct Mahler? I was a classicist, that is, I was brought up in Bach. At the same time, I had a penchant for 12-tone music. And since Mahler was, was neither in the world of Bach nor in the world of Luigi della Piccola. Um, so I was rather confused, this kind of post-romanticism uh, rubbed me basically the wrong way. And if, I've, if I'm seen in the public eye as a uh, uh, worthy interpreter of Mahler, it's only because I allowed myself to be seduced note by note, movement by movement over a period of, of two decades by the genius of this, uh, this great composer. And bit by bit, as I rose to, to a point in my own ability to perceive and to respond, I became closer and closer to his music so that I perform it um, out of true love and conviction, not out of some intellectual um, tilt. Tell us a little bit about the challenges of conducting Mahler's works. Do you have to approach each work differently, or is there a common thread which runs through all of his works from a technical point of view? Well, I think it's his humanity and his vulnerability and his uh, charming insouciance and his sense of humour and his vision of light. There's a simplicity, directness and honesty and a conviction at the same time that, that you feel in Mahler's music, that he himself at the time felt he was doing the right thing and this was the, the only way to express it. It's the human quality, it's, it's the person behind the notes as well as the music behind the notes that, that fascinates me. I, I really feel as if, as if I've come to know Gustav Mahler, uh, the, uh, the person, the, the, the man, intimately through his music. And I, I feel there, there are no barriers. I feel as if uh, I really have int integrated uh, his person, his persona, uh, into mine. And so it's, it's just like breathing when I, when I perform his music. Throughout his career, Mahler was criticized for his unconventional interpretations as a 
conductor. And we come to that well-known dictum of his that tradition is sloppiness or laziness. Do you think that was aimed at the people who questioned his style? Well, there was a streak of the moralist in <laughs> Mahler, the moralistic way of making music. And I must admit that uh, it, at least in the first 30 years of my making music, I was somewhat of a moralistic uh, interpreter too. And uh, maybe because uh, I've lived uh, perhaps too long, uh, I, it escapes me now. As Michael Douglas says in Wall Street 2, man is a mixed bag. <laughs> and indeed, we are a rather odd combination of um, trends and thoughts and contradictions and uh, principles and uh, hypocrisy. It's, it's all part of our, the way we're made up. With your wealth of experience of the music of Mahler and through your eyes and your ears, what do you think is Mahler's legacy? Well, I think he put music on the map. That is, having managed to stretch out to other dimensions, it's no longer a cultural thing to go to a concert. It's a trip, it's an experience. It's the visionary, it's the cosmic, it's the uh, unmusical aspect of his music making that uh, gives him a, uh, a space in history, a place in history, all, all its own and all his own. Thank you.